The following theory, The Singularity, contains spoilers and speculation for the story of Warframe, touching on aspects across the game, both shown and yet to be seen. It aims to establish an overarching theory of exactly what has, is, and will be within the Warframe universe. This is the start of a series referred to as Fragmentation. Following the singularity, the series Fragmentation will provide more context and evidence, while the singularity simply lays out what I believe has and will transpire. It is highly recommended that you complete at least the new war before watching. This is a draft meant to get out before Tenogon. An official version will be released later. Patterns. Emerge as we grasp the facts as we know them. Eternalism, the six faces of reality, of causality, light, shadow, and the object cast, the process of dispersion. Void, the dreaming world, the spiral, a seemingly endless, rewritable loop. Sacrifice. The price required, the debt owed. Family and personhood. Our bodies and reasons to hang. Family and personhood. Our bonds and reasons to hang on in our eternal undeath. Numbers and reflections. One through ten. Before we repeat again. Eternalism. The past and future are as real as the present we experience. They coexist, and if we could change our frame of reference, we could interact with them, slipping from one face of reality to the next, backwards and forwards, and in directions none can point. This is what allows us to watch our loved ones die, only to slip from that reality to one where they didn't, or perhaps even go back and rewrite the events so they never took place. The Spiral of Space and Time forever spinning, rotation after rotation. If we know how to slip from one reality to the next, using the void that exists outside the spiral, we can re-emerge and change what is meant to be. We can't change it entirely. The spiral can only be slightly nudged, rewritten to something similar. And the more often the spiral is rewritten, the harder it becomes to change. Fragmentation is what happens when we rewrite the loop to change the outcome. What once was doesn't just disappear. Fragments of it still linger and can be found or end up cast off into unreality, into the void. Loke. The void or slumbering dream. A vast sea of possibility. The light that leaks out into the endless sea of dark and forms reality from the shadow cast. It exists outside of space and time, shaped like a cube, yet all faces touch every possible reality. The void manifests any possibility within itself, but in doing so, dispersion occurs, casting rays of rainbow light across reality, altering reality to reflect what appears within. The void provides our universe with more than just the tangible, but the abstract as well, our emotions, music, color, and more. While within the void, these concepts can be given physical form, taking new life within the void. This embodiment allows one to impose their will in a sphere of influence upon the vast tapestry of possibility, allowing them to create just about anything, should their will be strong enough, real or otherwise. While this space is seemingly endless, it is just the very edge of the membrane that is the sea where the winds don't blow. Should one be brave enough to dive deeper and wade the water, one could come before a wall of bone. Within the void is the wall of Loke, a wall made of bone, with a visage of a man trapped within. The man in the wall has four arms and legs, four fingers upon each hand, all say but one, which a single digit sundered. Two narrow slits split downwards across his lopped head, ending just where his eyes should be, leaving curiously empty channels. Almost like something is meant to slide into place and rest. 
If the void is a cube, and you build a wall around the void, the void becomes a box. If you place someone within the box, the void becomes a prison. We, you, believe the void to be a vast consciousness trapped beyond the man in the wall, who themselves is but a reflection of the man imprisoned. After all, the void seemingly is an unstoppable force. How would one contain it? Perhaps with an unmovable object? Reflections of the void entity itself? After all, how does a man trapped within bone Here they lay trapped, gazing, accusing, denying the fate afforded them. Trapped in a hall of mirrors, seeing all of reality, unable to experience any of it for themselves, envious and alone. Sacrifice. The price required. The debt paid. Within the void, anything is possible. But in order to manifest something, a price is required. In order to make something real, something must be given. Body, mind, or soul, all accepted currencies within the void. For here, all have equal power. Flesh, in order to interact with the world, to experience sensation, sensation born of our soul's experience, experience stored as memory and consciousness, one's identity, Yes, these things can be traded for power. Anything our little heart desires. But it must be paid. Soul, the light of the void, our sun our, and our oro, a mortal soul. The power of possibility and things that could be. Terra, the object that cast. Earth, our home, our body, a shell of flesh and machinery. The power to interact and affect reality. Lua, the shadow of reality. Our moon, our mind, the memory of what has transpired. The power to recall and relive. With this knowledge, I lay before you what I, we, believe has transpired and what is to come. The Zeremon was sabotaged and never left for Tau. The Zeremon successfully made the jump to Tau. The Zeremon slammed into the void, punching a hole in the wall of Lok, granting access to the void, to our reality. These are not contradictions, merely eternalism at work, all true upon different faces of reality. For you see, when Dr. Entrati first connected to the void, he witnessed what few others do. When they gaze upon the void, instead of seeing a vast sea, of emptiness, he instead saw light. To understand as to why, we have to accept a few things happened within that one moment across the six different faces of reality. In one face of reality, his experiment failed to open a bridge to the void. In another, he succeeded in making the untimed door as we know it to be now. And in another, still, his experiment erupted, shredding his body to pieces killing him. Through the singularity, all of these events have become true at once, no longer isolated within their own realities, a possibility, and instead are now shared as one truth across all of reality. It is with his death that we find the truth of why the void is experienced differently by others. Death leaves a mark. Do you understand? A mark in which the void can reach out and touch reality. With our end, we can gaze upon all that could have been and that might become. Now the void had a body of its own, a paradoxical twin, that was beyond the wall of Loke. One they could puppet and use this once empty shell, to step out into our reality, the reality in which Dr. Entrati still lived, ripped asunder by shards of glass.
This failed, however, trapping the void within itself once more, and due to the doctor's fear and unwilling to gaze once more into the mirror, the void once again found itself unable to interact with the outside reality, only able to rat-a-tap-tap, prodding for a weakness, a way out beyond the walls of his prison. Beyond the walls of their prison. His next chance would come with his Zeremin and her crew. Upon the face of reality in which we slammed into the wall of Loke, becoming wedged between reality and possibility, we created a narrow bridge in which the void could leak out into our reality, all realities, and begin to influence all that was. During the first spiral, we, young adults of the Zeremin acting as her crew, were college-aged, perfect for colonizing Tau, for our golden lords, still needing some more education, not old enough to be seen as adults, but too old to be seen as children. Within the Zeremin wedged, we were left adrift where winds don't blow, amongst the endless blackness, emptiness, that the living see the void to be. I know very little of what happened during the first iteration, as the walls have been overwritten so many times. But I know for certain, we died. We lingered holding on between life and death, and that's when we met the paradoxical twin of Dr. Entrati, still himself and not, likely fighting within himself against the devil that now shared his skin, in much the same way Rel fought against the man in the wall. He made us an offer. He could save them. All of them. It would just cost a... A young man's body. An old man's soul. Our body likely started to twist and snap, welding itself to the Zeremin, becoming the first of the angels. We had been seduced by the light and were slowly being consumed. Having drank from the wellspring of power and easily manipulated and molded into something more useful to the void. We were slipping, quickly losing ourselves, and would have suffered the same fate as all others if not for what remained of Dr. Entrati. Sol, known by names more familiar, that of Endo and Oro, Endo being an end point of a soul, a single isolated version untethered to others, and Oro, a few soul connected to countless versions of itself across all realities. When we accept the deal, the man on the wall claimed our body, mind, and soul, and in turn connected our endo to all others, fusing us as one, granting us countless experiences, and making us a large, vast consciousness able to experience all of reality simultaneously. The whispers, the voices of all the other versions were overwhelming, and we struggled to handle us, all of us, at once, and we threatened to be consumed by our shared madness, transforming us into the first angel, a herald of the void. Until what remained of Dr. Entrati stepped in. He housed us within what remained of his flesh, fused his aura with ours, starting our journey as a chimera, before ripping himself, us, apart, scattering us into countless pieces, causing a great dispersion of brothers, sisters, daughters, sons. Ballas was wrong once again. Hell was hot enough to split us into a past full of light, of possibility, childhood, and our shadowy, murky future, lost amongst what could have been adulthood. This started the family spirals, where we lived amongst the Zeremin. Dr. Entrati, whom tried to educate us about the void and all that occurred, and how to handle being trapped. We lived for a time a peaceful, idyllic life, with the void growing more and more frustrated, thinking itself trapped once more, until the cracks started to show, the proof that what it had tried had worked. The doctor had just tricked the void into thinking it failed. Once the void understood, 
they started the spiral over and rewrote the narrative from a pleasant dream into a hellish nightmare of the Zeremon. The void hopped from Tenno to Tenno and planted seeds of distrust, turned adult against child, ripping these self-made families apart. He tore them apart further into great divisions, making them hollow reflections of what they once were, turning them luminous, and letting them loose upon the ship, offering the same deal again to others, this time successfully seducing them and turning them into angels that started to dig through the wall of Loke to free their true self. We struggle to remember these previous versions of reality because they have been overwritten and only fragments of proof remain, a picture displaying the family we, you, us, once had within the Zeremon. If you speak to the us that we call the Drifter and ask them about their time in Duviri, they often mention a moment a time when they found their mother's hand who guided them back onto the path. A moment during which they found themselves first face to face with a child. And above them in this room aboard the Zeremon, with no mirror to cast a reflection, instead hung an angel encased in the stony remains of a statue of Dr. Entrati. This angel differs, however slightly, from the others. Our Duviri, our prime. This version, our Nerta, undeath, hangs between life and death, our minds trapped, brain shelved from a body that can't move, and feel and instead connects to us as a proxy to be able to escape its spiral as we, they, are slowly consumed by the void, chopping off limbs, casting out islands in order to stop the infection and influence of the encroaching void that has already consumed our legs, that weighed too deep in, within the waters of the void. To slow its descent below, into death, into true oblivion, we cling to life, desperate to come back from the brink, needing to restore our body, put our frame, our flesh, back together, to reclaim ourselves and what we've lost, to pay our way out of debt and undo these mistakes. Our oro, flesh, and mind composed Duviri, which is entwined within the Zeremon, no longer just human, but something more, a chimera of synthetic and organic life, a ship adrift across a multitude of reality. We act as many things here, a training ground to restore our strength, a place to rest and recoup, to rebuild and restore our flesh and synthetic frame, to act as a wall to prevent the void from escaping. And finally, as a graveyard, a shrine to all our failures, to recall and remember the sacrifice required, making peace to build a future. We lay trapped within the void, fragmented, scattered across space and time, amongst all that is unreal and yet to be, separated from one another, lost, adrift until we are lifeless alone forever meanwhile the void hops from reality to reality body to body nudging the spiral changing every face to be the same all as one in the void's vision the void works to free their true self with each rotation they weaken the walls of their prison attempting to free themselves. The void outmaneuvers us, outplays us at every turn. We can't lift this dead alone. We can't turn the tides by ourselves. An endless enemy wages war, and we have lost the first battle, made our sacrifice, and we 
barely cling to life anymore. The next spiral fast approaches, and soon we will begin again. The work's already begun as the spiral fragments. This knowledge will soon be scattered across the surface of the spiral. You, we, will need to find it once more. With each rotation, something grows more dim. But you can send it back to hell. Ballas is our warden and is the key to the cell. Unwittingly working for the void, the void drives Ballas and all others towards the singularity, towards our golden sun. You can't just drain the sun and it have no consequences. With each trip around, it remains fragmented, weaker than before, being drained by our new war. The void bid us to answer his call, for we are all one. The void bid us to answer his call, for we are all one. The Void believes they healed us of our independence, that it's a virtue to lift alone. Better to be empty shells, husks used as another's plaything, than to struggle with existence in personhood. Everyone and everything in this and all realities lay claim to our bodies, minds, and souls, as if it were theirs. Well, it's fucking not. And it's about time we show them. And we need to act quickly. For when the sun goes out, that's where I come in. <laughs>